The holidays are here, and HelloFresh makes this busy time of year easier than ever with chef-crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. Door, door. Right door. Get door, 18 door, door. free meals, plus free shipping with code VALLEYCAST18 at HelloFresh.com slash VALLEYCAST18. On to the show! Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes, I think it starts with your well, first of all, welcome back, everyone. Joe, I'm glad to be on the show with you. It's been a little bit. I feel like it's been, you guys, it's been a been minute. Scattered. We've been scattered. Um, I feel like we just spoke, and it's not necessary to be doing this. It feels like we're doing this every week. Yeah, it is weird point. that we do it every week. I wasn't aware that that was what we did here. And there's no breaks. It's not like a holiday. No, no breaks. It's- you know, if there's one thing we can say about the journey of the Valley cast is that I'm pretty sure we've never missed a week. Yeah. Like yeah. We in the Valley haven't. folk yeah. existence. We definitely wow. haven't. That, you guys, is pretty true cool. success. Hey, true success. Listen, they say if you work really hard, you'll get everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> uh, that's an unrelated that's an unrelated thing that people say. Yeah. <laughs> um so my question to you guys is right off yes. the top here is this do you think there's anyone who is highly intelligent that believes in the flat earth theory or are they all idiots i think you have to be really specific about what you mean by intelligent well let's just say how about I like this that. Someone who is like they have a PhD. Maybe depends they, on what that PhD is in. Let's say that yeah. they're really smart. Let's say that they're like. Let's say they're like a they're like a, a world history teacher. They have a PhD <laughs> in world history. <laughs> okay, such, that'd be such a hard topic. <laughs> I think I also <laughs> just think they call the it. Flag. I think they call it just history now. I don't think. <laughs> I could be wrong. I Who's know. the smartest yeah, right? person on the planet that believes in the flat earth theory? What what does somebody that holds a PhD in history, world history, who is also a flat earth believer? <laughs> what does that person think Magellan did? <laughs> yeah. Skipping stones. <laughs> <laughs> just like went around the parameter of the sur- I don't know I don't know <laughs> like it, it like the flat earth thing can't be like there can't be people who you can trust that believe that it is one I, of I, those oh go ahead Elliot please 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 well please, I, please. I do feel I you know I, I do I do you know I do feel like people can be intelligent but also have certain paranoid uh, or even schizophrenic uh, complexes that arise, and I think that if you believe in the flat Earth, you can still be an intelligent person. There's just something going on in you that is uh, wrong. So you, so you're saying that up. someone could be intelligent and believe in flat Earth, but the belief in flat Earth is a illness. <laughs> I would say that, yeah. I would say it too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not to go all. Professional diet. I would say it but... too. I would also say that. It's certainly one of those things that it's like <laughs> as soon as you find out, or as soon as they make any sort of mention towards even an inkling of thinking it's a possibility, <laughs> all credibility out the it's window. Over. It doesn't matter what they've done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like Kyrie yeah. Irving like kind of leaned into he's a big old basketball player, Steve, controversial as of late. But before even his controversies for now. Like he was kind of like leaning, like, "Hey, man, it's not crazy to think that the Earth might be flat." And everybody's like, "He's not good at basketball." <laughs> well, you know, Shaq said it too. Shaq. Did you see that thing where Shaq mm-hmm. said it? Yeah. But I think Shaq was and misquoted. The other great basketball player of the '90s, Millie Bobby Brown, uh, <laughs> also a flat earther. Is Millie Bobby Brown a flat earther? They don't say they're flat earthers. They do the same thing everybody else does, which is they go, it's just a question. Yeah, dude, dude, mean, that's, exa- <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. Just, but what, I you see, don't like questions? But that's what makes me think that it's mis... Un- I, re- I really dove into the Shaq thing, thinking like, okay, let's. it's time to make fun of Shaq, I guess. 
but I read into it to make sure I wasn't going to put my foot in my mouth. And it sounds like he's hey, just like... Hey, that was fucking responsible and mature of you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, usually when it's someone who's like really prolific and people love them and... And are over seven feet tall. They're over seven feet tall <laughs> and can crush me with one punch. <laughs> Uh, usually I'll, I'll be, I'll be a bit more careful about like, you know, being like on the, I don't like them fence or something, or like, if I don't like them, I want to have a really good reason. Um, so I was, I was really digging into this one and I was like, oh man, is it time to not like Shaq? What's happening? Cause that's, that sucks when someone has like a huge platform like that. And then they go like, Hey, everybody that loves me, no matter what, I believe in a flat earth now. It's like there's going to be a percentage of those people that are like, me too, because I love you. Me too, because Shaq. Me too, yeah, me too, because Shaq. Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just me like too, with the Shaq. Kanye shit or the Yee or whatever the fuck he wants to be what called. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Uh, I'll send you some links. But, um, <laughs> but, ding, 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 Stop sending links. Stop sending links. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but, uh, but I read, I read into the Shaq thing and found out that like he might be trolling. And then he goes, he goes on to say, listen, it's just a theory. It's just a fun thing to think, to like have it. It creates an interesting discussion. It's an interesting discussion. Interesting is an and he's interesting like, word to use. Can't anybody just make up a theory and be like, is that true? And it's like, I, I think I believe that, that anybody should be allowed to make up a theory. But I think that once they've pr been proven to be Shut wrong, <laughs> they need to stop. <laughs> they need to follow up and be like, theory, uh, theory yeah. debunked. Yeah. Theory debunked. But nobody yeah, does I that. Bet. No. They're all nobody too, does that. We're all too lazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly but uh but yeah i think the show i didn't know about the millie bobby brown thing but i did know that there is a popular response to things like that when people are like wait you don't really believe that do you which is the like it's just theory yeah it's a fun okay so there's also a difference between like a theory and like a scientific theory because the, just a the theory that you make up isn't a theory like evolution <laughs> is a theory and gravity is a theory because these things have been tested so much that it's the best explanation for the phenomenon, but it doesn't <laughs> yeah. mean you scientifically can't make a claim yeah. on like reality. I've got it. I've got it, guys. I'm gonna throw it <laughs> yeah, down. exactly. You can't make a scientific claim about reality without then without doing you, research. Well, no, without using you, the scientific process. The problem right, is, is the that process. We are, exactly. We're throwing the scientific process completely out the window when we use the word theory, right. which <laughs> we're going to coin right. this right now. We should just say anytime somebody says this, any type of bullshit without any type of evidence or process or follow through, it's a miri. It's what I think. <laughs> this, a is my, it's a this, is <laughs> this is my miri. This is my miri. I have a miri. Perhaps because it's interesting, the world is flat. <laughs> there's going to be, you know how there's like my pillow? There's going to be my theory. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, I mean, just because of my... Do I know my pillow, dude? I'm overflowing in them here. I make certain <laughs> nature. They won't stop sending them. I've got a room full of my pillows for me to just run around in. Such a God. funny name of a co dude. Company. It's so funny, Elliot. Like even before I knew that they were like GOP monsters, uh, I was like, I laughed at it so hard. I, I remember the first time I ever saw it was in a fries. You know those stores, fries, fries oh, electronics. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember going into the like as seen on TV section and I couldn't Best believe section. there was a product called My Pillow. My Pillow. <laughs> <laughs> It's got a guy on it. That looks like me. He's wearing a button up <laughs> shirt and he's like, <laughs> This is my oh, pillow. Yeah. I'm like, Well, then should I be buying this if it's your pillow? <laughs> Also, like, shouldn't you be in pajamas or something that's not like a button-down dress shirt? <laughs> Guys, I'm... I... <laughs> Welcome to the Valley Cast. Welcome to the Valley Cast. We're glad you're all here. Joe, how you been, man? How was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was was super laid back, super swell. I, I, I helped as much as I could this year. Usually my wife uh, likes to take it on, and uh, we're when we do it just ourselves, our family on our own, it's like, okay, well, dinner's at nine. And this year, I prepped everything. 
I, 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 I shaved <laughs> the potatoes and the sweet potatoes and chopped them all up. You did it diced. all yourself? I just got it prepped for, and then she rocked the crap out of it. And then, uh, yeah, we just had a real laid nice. back dinner. Yeah. How was your guys? Uh, chill. We talked about it on the last show, but or the show before maybe, but it was chill. Nothing super exciting to report. Um, yeah. It was real nice. Family time, always pop, always popular, always, uh, always fun. I was popular with the I, family. I don't know if you guys saw, but we last week I talked extensively about broccoli casserole, and then in the <laughs> yeah. bottom of the description for the episode, I put an entire recipe for broccoli casserole. <laughs> Joe, because no broccoli one goes casserole? down there. I think I've heard of broccoli casserole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do, you, casserole? do you like casserole? <laughs> Are you a casserole guy? No. Well, it depends. It, they're all different. It's all I, just I, mixed yeah. up crap. Well, but you had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was, it was total. I wish there was more to report because it's it's not a, the, the most enthralling talking point. It was just laid back, needed, uh, and too short. It's too short. Yeah. And here we are running into Christmas. Yep. Christmas is, is steadily arriving. It doesn't feel like uh, the season. It doesn't like, I feel like the, no. again, world's too crazy. Uh, you know, tail end of the pandemic, if not still in it. And it just still feels like we're all kind of like reeling a little bit. Yeah. And, and the festivity is gone. I went to a, our Burbank does this like Christmas tree lighting. And I was sending Elliot some some pictures I loved and some it. videos from it. Mm, and every year, delightful. a bunch of people from ten, come down. I've done it the last like, I don't know, six, seven years that I've lived here. Bring the kids. Mickey and Minnie show up every year. And then Santa shows up. This year he showed up on a on a hog, on a motorcycle. Yeah. And uh, did he have a leather jacket on? He didn't, but he did. He just he had the hawk, and he had Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Claus with him. And then they was it a the real Christmas. motorcycle? Yeah, that's cool. And they liked the Christmas tree, but even with all of that, there was so much less fanfare. The crowd was like barely into it, barely clapping. The high school girls were off key, constantly. <laughs> Damn. And uh, yeah, it just seemed like the 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 wind was sucked out of the sails. But I tell you what, man, it's so funny every single year. And I've never seen it except for movies. I come, I'm come from a small town, and you think this would happen in a small town, but I've only seen it happen in Burbank and in movies. And it's like the mayor is up there, and it's the mayor doing the what? presentation. And the mayor was the mayor is like, of Burbank there. Yeah, the mayor and all <laughs> like that. Feel kind of cool. Did that feel kind of special? No, it's so dorky and so <laughs> no, like it's so forced and it's so no. Like, come on, they they keep like you loved it. <laughs> they keep talking about other council members like anybody in the crowd either A, knows oh, who God. they are or cares. And they like try to make themselves the stars of it a little bit. It's and like then... those those corporate events where they're yeah. like, Mickey I've heard show up. from finance is a, a bit of a joker. <laughs> Yeah, and exactly yeah. what That's it is. Me. That's me. <laughs> Mickey and Minnie show up, and then they get re like relegated. A meet. It's like Mickey and Minnie are here, and people are like sweet Mickey and Minnie, and then they get relegated to the back behind the tree while the mayor keeps like talking and making dumb inside jokes to like <laughs> the treasurer. And it's like, oh, what God. are we doing here? What are we doing? Isn't this for kids more than anything? Should be. And then Adam Schiff shows up. <laughs> Who's that? You don't know who Adam senator. Schiff is? He's our senator. Oh. <laughs> Did I vote for him? Probably. Oh, yeah, you definitely Probably voted did. for him. Uh, but, like, he shows up, and people are like, sweet, Adam Schiff. And he says hello, and then it's like it's – there's no snow. There's no music in the air. It's just the effort isn't as there. But when the lights on the Christmas tree turn on, it's like, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. it looked nice. I mean, that's what everybody's I mean, there for. And if that's the yeah. whole point of it, you want to extend it as much as you possibly can, right? They didn't. It was like – <laughs> it was – <laughs> minutes we were we were left <laughs> they're like okay bye see you guys later hey, thanks for coming santa dude, at least you left your house you know i mean you got out for a second and went into the real world <laughs> did you do you find elliot that as we get older yes. and as this world crumbles in on itself there's less and less reason to leave the comfort of your home well, it can't crumble in on itself because it's literally a flat plane. <laughs> uh, so it would just, it would well, more be like a brittle situation. Well, what it does well, that's is a that theory. As it gets crack. hotter, that's a, just a theory. I mean, as I'm it not... gets hotter, the edges, they dry out first and they start to curl up. So the edges of the, <laughs> the world curl up and right, then exactly. they fold in on each other. 
So exactly. that you're right. Like That's a scroll. <laughs> the, a scroll the earth is like a scroll. Well, that is what the Bible says. And re- the earth will be rolled up like a scroll. I don't think they would have said that if the earth was round. They would have said crunched up like a ball. Shaq do you guys said. um do you guys get the feeling that like it's all coming to an end? Well, I know Elliot, I know how you feel about horror movies. They're not like your favorite. Well, they're too scary. But uh they are too scary and sometimes they're too scary. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> I can't think of the last time a movie really scared me um, truly, but Joe, I know you like scary movies and sometimes, you know, I know the month of October is well over, but what? I, f- I feel like <laughs> check your calendar, Joe, I could be wrong, but um, I know that October is over, but I feel like October is the month when everyone's like, well, let's watch a bunch of scary movies, right? Like, this is the time to watch scary movies. It's like, it feels like the season. Right on. The season's changing. It's like, you know, and then Halloween's at the end of the month. So it's like, you know, but a lot of people watch a lot of horror movies building up to to October. And then November hits. And then it's like, time for Christmas. Porn. Uh, Christmas movies. (laughs) Christmas Christmas porn. Porn. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) What I meant is it was porn. (laughs) (laughs) You guys ever seen Santa's Gay? That oh, porn? Oh, no. Yes. Yes. I, I, I saw the prequel called Ho Ho Ho. But I didn't, uh, <laughs> Ho Ho Ho's. Classic joke. Classic. Um, but uh, I've been. I feel like we don't get enough time. Like I think we should watch horror movies and still enjoy horror movies. Like I think we should enjoy them yearly, obviously. But I think if October is the month to like do it, it feels like it's not enough time. I, and and November is like, what do we got in November? Well, we got Thanksgiving. I think we should extend horror movie watching through November and then not start start watching Christmas movies until December 1st. So there's a problem with what your your Miri here. Okay. Your Miri has a problem. Okay. Uh, it's all about the buildup, right? What you're saying is what my daughter is contending, is that the Christmas season is too long in comparison to the Halloween fright season. I agree. So what you're actually needing to advocate for is September is when we need to start watching scary movies because it's all about the lead up, the lead up to Christmas. And then when Christmas is done, boom, it's gone, dude. So you think the November lead up to Christmas is necessary and it shouldn't change? I'm not saying that it's necessary. I'm just saying once you blow your load on Halloween, like it's hard to like want to keep that going. You're you're building up the fright until the the denouement. That's a word. Yeah. The je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that like, I, I, I feel like October should be the jumping off point into more like Halloween should be the jumping off point into more horror movies because horror movies continually come out. Right. And there's this horror movie that just came out recently that everyone's talking about. And it's like, it's got a really wacky title. But the trailer, like, legitimately creeped me out. And I've never been creeped out by a trailer, really. Not since I was, like, I don't know, maybe 17 or something. uh, Avatar, Way of Water. (laughs) (laughs) No, Joe. The movie legitimately is called (laughs) Skinamarink. Have you heard of this? No, but it makes me think of Sharon Lois and Bram's Mm. Elephant Show. Skin of a rinky dinky dink, 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 I love fact, you. Dude, the fact that you knew the source for that rhyme is crazy. I've <laughs> never heard that of what you just mentioned. I know the rhyme, but man, that's crazy. What did you say it was from? Sharon Lewis and from Bram's the elephant, elephant Show. The Elephant Show, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah. three show. It was three I like Skin Marie Kiddick, Skin Marie Kiddick, but I've never heard the show or the person who made it. It was three middle aged, if not slightly older, uh, folk singers, two women and a, and a dude, and they they strummed wow. their guitars okay. and sang songs, and it might have had some animated elements. I forget. So I, th- we were watching a VR. We we do our weekly VR night movies with friends, and uh, <clears throat> Harley from Epic Meal Time, humble brag, name drop. We're right here was uh hanging out and was like we should watch the trailer for this movie called skinamarink 
And I was like, well, I had never heard of this. This sounds great. And he's like, dude, it was like legit creepy. The whole movie. He's like, just watch the trailer. So we watched the trailer and it was like really unsettling and strange. And like, it it was just really weird. It's like, it's just an unsettling trailer. And Harley was saying the whole movie's like that pretty much it's unsettling and you don't know where it's going and the imagery and it's almost like you're watching a nightmare because it's all like weird like inside of a house shot with like uh shots with the lighting being like kind of like a spotlight and the darkness is all around everything else and so it's almost like there's like one source of light in every room but you're like walking through this house and then there's like this voice whispering to you from up into the dark stairwell and it's like kind of like a deep demon voice or something. It was just like really unsettling and, and cool. Um, and now I can't wait to see this movie, but I'm afraid to watch it alone. Yay! How long has it been since you so felt long. like that? <laughs> so long. Honestly, though, uh, can I say that Hereditary felt... Because, you know, the hype around Hereditary was like, man, this movie's fucking scary. You guys seen that movie? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Elliot? No. It, the, the the hype was <laughs> that it was scary as that. fuck and so i was like fuck i'm i'm nervous now like i don't know if i want to watch a scary as fuck movie alone you know i'd rather watch it with friends or something i don't know how you can watch any horror movie by yourself and i find it both impressive and disconcerting <laughs> yeah it is strange <laughs> i really could it is never crazy do it. there like, are some crazy- yeah if she's out of town and I'm like, man, I've been wanting to see this movie that I've heard is scary that everybody loves. There is a 0% chance I would even consider watching it by myself. The fact that y'all can do it is cool. I just can't. I can't get there. I want to paint, paint a scenario for you. Grace is out of town. I'm like, yo, dog, watch this episode of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> what is the percentage of a chance that you do not listen to the theme song and just go straight to the episode. <laughs> Why is it so scary? <laughs> Why is the theme song so scary? <laughs> Why did it scare us? Did it scare you, Elliot? Do you remember the theme song? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I won't. Sc- I mean, I'll watch that, but also it does bring up an interesting thing that a debate in this. I'm not trying to segue or 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 usurp the conversation here but we've had discussions about intros i personally believe t- tv intros deserve their own emmy category and yeah really what a great that's thought a great that's so thought. good not mine not mine i've heard somebody else say it and i hijacked it but that's the, really good some of the intros nowadays are so good we finally got into a show called white lotus which is oh, so elliot good. i can't no idea. wait to talk to you about that no idea uh and uh, we're so we start in the second season you didn't and watch the first season? We'll go back, but it's like Whoa. mid second season, so we're gonna get caught up. We immediately get caught up. We're gonna go back to the first season. Uh, but you like it? Gen- oh, love it! Isn't like, it incredible? Jennifer-, Jennifer Coolidge is also one of the just the funniest human beings. Wow, that's uh, alive, so but- weird. You're watching it backwards. The intro is so good, and the intros to shows like Game of Thrones or uh a bunch, Game of i mean Thrones. all of them Ooh, classic all so good. dude and the like, severance intro you guys see the sever the show severance severance, severance is is intro is exactly an emmy award uh yeah winner. and but then after we see it once there's an agreement that like i'm like no we have to watch mm. the intro and after that skip every time that's what i was gonna ask because some some intros like you said are so good the first time you see them but then you never want to see them again one that immediately comes to mind for me that i never want to see again succession i i, I was like oh, <laughs> i agree love I agree. Succession. that but, beat is so good that never yeah, want to you see hear it, again. it throughout the whole show you hear it in the episodes <laughs> yeah. too oh it's so good. You're right. the, whole, the whole movies it's setting it up perfectly you're like this is pretty good this is like kind of well done it's art oh, and then you're like your brain kind of like like it feels like it gets punched by a monkey when you see Will Ferrell and Adam McKay's name. You're like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. And then you get back <laughs> in. It seems then, out of place. Yeah. One hundred percent. But then, like every time from here on out, I'm like, there's no, there's no world where I will ever watch that intro again. I, I skipped really? it. I've been yeah. watching the Flight of the Concord show again. I've been doing a rewatch. It's so good. It's so good. And so many really? episodes are directed by Taika Waititi, pretty much. In the, in the, at least in the final season it's so good but that intro is like i don't need to see it every time it's the same yeah, thing right? it's the same thing every time remember when you want to get to the show 
Remember when they would do like the like the season, the first season would have like a fucking one minute and 30 second intro. And then the second season would have like a 30 second version. Yeah. That Why did they stop me. doing that? Yeah. They had the office too. Even the office had like, it went from just like. And yeah. Kind of yeah. It's nice. I, I, think I think shows need to do that. I think a lot of it's probably out of control. Like, so on an HBO, you're, you're in a hundred percent control and it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, but then like network television, you are at the behest of a advertisers and B. Dun, dun, dun. Fuck you. <laughs> Joe just leaves. <laughs> Dude, am I gonna get murdered? Is a ghost gonna fucking steal my dad? It's a bop uh, though. It's by alien? So good. So good. <laughs> Anything can happen. Anything can happen Joe, on that show. That's uh, the problem. Speed? Yeah. Uh, well, you talking about unsolved mysteries? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That song yeah. elicits fear because you're like. Ghost, maybe aliens, perhaps. Yeah, how oh, come it would do uh, that? How come it would be about ghosts sometimes? Neighbors gonna murder me? Uh oh! Oh shit! Demons this episode? Oh yeah. crap! Like it went everywhere. Like if it was everywhere. just like you know serial killer stuff. That's the thing, dude. But it I think wasn't. we just figured it out. It validates your other fears that you're unsure about because it's like, hey. Here's this true story, by the way, because of this show, we solved it last week, so you know this shit's real. So then you're like, you're set up on this foundation of reality, and then they're like, yo, horse ghost. Yeah, this one's about goblins, and it's like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> this is they about really, <laughs> They're so smart about being like, mostly it's going to be just people who kill people. Then we'll throw in a goblin. Then we'll throw in a whole <laughs> goblin thing. <laughs> Why does that show? They they tried to redo that show. They try. It's it, like, it's, it's happening, done. and it's great. I it's love good. it. Good. No one's yeah. talking about it. I had uh, a theory so today dude. that upset Matt Robb a lot. It made him think that I was like being super uh, nerdy movie snob. Which, come on, guys. I, when have I ever been nerdy? Nerdy. No. When have I snob, ever snob. been He's a nerdy? Just a nerdy snob. Snob. Nerdy. Nerdy. <laughs> nerdy. Slop. Slop. But I I was saying, tell me if you guys think this is true or if you guys agree with this at all. And I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to phrase this better because the first time I the, when I phrased it the first time it was unclear what I was trying to say I guess but maybe Kanye's right maybe Kanye's right okay now Matt was upset for a reason yeah. we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, no I I was saying if so we were talking specifically about movies and we can, we can come back to the to the unsolved mysteries if you want in a sec but bano, 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 this bano. is about movies so if so for me particularly i follow a lot of movie nerds i a lot of movie nerd news sites i've got my finger on the pulse of the entertainment industry as a whole when a new movie comes out if it's got a good director, good cast, good story, I'm going to be all up on that shit. If it's not a good movie, it just disappears into the ether, right? Like, think about the past 10 years. Like, this is just an example. But for the past 10 years, think of all the movies that have come out and how many of them will stand the Four. test of time. Four movies have come out. <laughs> at least, at least. But how many of them will stand the test of time and be remembered and studied and beloved? And how many of them will disappear into nothingness? So think about that for a second. And this is the statement I made. I said, for all the movie stuff that we love, for all the times we talk about movies on shows, in our personal lives, whatever, don't you think that if a movie that came out 20 years ago, and before so beyond so so before so even further than 20 years ago are you talking like 1990 90s is what we're talking let's about? say er, let's say 90s and before so going to yeah. 80s 70s 60s 50s all the way to the beginning of time of movies don't they you think they, they no they didn't go back to the beginning of time do you think that there is something to be said do you think that that you could say that if you don't hear if if a movie from those eras doesn't make it into your 
peripheral people aren't talking about it you're not watching it it's kind of just disappeared into nothingness that that movie probably sucks do i agree with that statement? do you agree that if it came out past 20 years ago and no one's talking about it and it's not brought up in conversations with movie nerds casual movie viewers whatever that most likely that movie sucks can we can we think about this for just a moment while I talk about one of my favorite films, which is called Dadgrass? Guys, uh, is that okay? Is it cool? Yeah, to, uh, that's a great segue. That's a and perfect a segue, dude. Okay, and it was anyways. a cliffhanger. Tell me about but Dadgrass. I do want, Tell me about the movie I wanna, Dadgrass. Well, I want to keep hearing the conversation, but I did look at. The well, just think about it, and then we'll come back to it. We'll just keep thinking about it. But in the meantime, let's talk about Dadgrass here for a second, guys. And you scared grass. Joe I away. Have, I'm sorry, Joe. I have both of these products here right now because guess what? Your well-being is high on the priority list this holiday season. Dadgrass has you covered. Mellow out with their CBD pre-roll joints. Get a little hangover help with their good time tinctures. Mm. Or get sleep the dreams are made of with their mm. brand new nighttime gummies. That's correct. It's absolutely delicious and wonderful. And I just had some Dadgrass for the first time a couple nights ago, and it helped me sleep beautifully. I'm actually not going to lie. It was actually really lovely. And Dude, I CBD is perfect for when you want to sleep and you're not and you're tired and you can't sleep it's inc i had no idea i thought it was just a nothing thing and it made me so comfortable and nice and also there's no need to stress over the holidays this year because you can just take a toke break instead of worrying about what to get those impossible shop for members and guess what you can also get stuff for your puppies which we also do with goose and we give her all sorts of cbd treats because she's a busy lady and she needs it with all the stress in her life and guess what <laughs> dad grass is legal organic smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind they're 100 organic pre-rolled joints tinctures and gummies are very low in tea THC and high in CBD so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. That's very nice. You can keep going about your everyday life. And now they offer a variety of products. You can toke or dose just the way you like from their CBD tincture drops to the newly launched CBD gummies and flavors like classic blackberry ginger, good time hibiscus lime, and nighttime midnight berry. You can yeah. chill out without getting stoned. That's right. No necessary uh, stonage going on. And dad, dad grass didn't forget about your furry friends. They also release CBD dog bones so everyone in the house can enjoy Yum. all dad grass products every single one of them are federally legal for ages 18 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the u.s right now dad grass is offering our listeners of the valley cast 20 off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash valley cast go to dadgrass dadgrass.com slash valley cast <laughs> for 20 percent off your first order what's that elliot oh it's that's dadgrass.com slash valleycast, Elliot. Thanks, Elliot. Go to dadgrass.com slash valleycast for 20% off your first order. Thanks, Elliot. What was that again? I'll tell you. Go to dadgrass.com slash valleycast for 20% off your first order. When you go to dadgrass.com slash valleycast. Dadgrass.com slash valleycast grass dad grass. Whoa, speaking of intros. <laughs> Very good, Elliot. Yeah. We love our CBD in this house. Dad grass is very good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I would not consider a movie that people did not see. Not that they didn't see, but that they saw and are no longer talking about it. Like, if it's been 20 years... Are you talking about Avatar? Are you kind of hitting it around? No, it? no. I like Avatar, actually. No. Okay. So I understand what you're saying. I'm saying Steve. if people and don't talk about... a uh, this uh, a specific movie for over 20 years it's not in the zeitgeist it's not uh, brought up for any reason that means that it's probably because that movie sucks so let me ask uh, can i ask for a couple clarifiers and then i'll give you my opinion okay a clarifier would be um there are certain movies that are only not talked about but i stumbled upon and found out that other people had an enjoyment of them uh, once I started talking about them, for instance, Real Genius, mm -hmm. the com comedy masterpiece with the early yeah. Val Kilmer. Sure. Nobody's talking about Real Genius right now. But would you consider that movie to be an example or a not example of what you're talking about in regards to nobody talks about that now, so it sucks? I feel like Real Genius is one of those movies that like will will be and would be talked about on film Twitter. Like someone, like you guys follow Lon Harris. You guys know who Lon Harris yeah. is? I feel like Lon Harris would mention Real Genius. I okay. feel like Ben Meckler would mention Real Genius. I feel like so, there's people who would mention it because Real Genius, debatably, is actually pretty good. 
It's great. But these are like movie people. Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. Like in this world of like where movie people make movies about their lives are about movies. Like, I think what you're saying probably does apply for the most part, but there's a reason for that. And that is because uh, a lot of the things pre internet were created when we were not overrun with so much visual um stimulation and storytelling from from movies to t television to internet and yeah. now there's just so fucking much that it's really easy to miss things and it's really hard i think for those things to rise to the top especially these days. now it's easy to miss things for sure exactly so you're going to miss really good shit constantly yeah. And some of the film Twitter will talk about some of that really good shit. And even them will, they will miss some of that stuff as well. That's just back then those movies that, I mean, that was it. So like, it was really easy. I think for the classics to find their, their way into the good baskets, yeah. not even the classics, but the movies that you're talking about, there's just too much. There's just too much now it's content overload. But man. like in regards to say something like Titanic, Jurassic park, you know, these huge blockbuster movies. We'll go even further back. Gone with the Wind, uh, Citizen uh, Kane. The African Queen. African Queen, which is... An, which is movie. African Queen was uh, the inspiration for the Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. And is also oh, my really? favorite Billy yeah. Ocean song. Caribbean nice. Queen. African Queen. <laughs> same, see, uh, I think, the same thing. Like, but it's like how often... Do you get recommended a movie that's older than 20 years that you had never seen and also never heard of that ended up being like incredible? Yeah, I just can't. I don't. I can't. I can't. I don't have it. I won't do it. Yeah. And I know and I know I'm missing out on stuff. I yeah. know I'm missing out on a lot of good storytelling. But I if someone mentions a movie that's old that isn't being talked about that I never saw, never heard of the likelihood of me actually watching it is embarrassingly low. I wish and it's, it and it's safe to and say I, it I, might I, suck. That movie might suck. Cause it's yeah. like, in, there's a rare exception where there's like film nerds that are like, my favorite movie is called splendor in the grass. And it's like, right. it's from 1962 and it's like a, a psychedelic, like, you know, German movie or something. And it's like Oliver it, Stone was a first AD on this flick. He hadn't quite made the trick. Right. Yet. Right. Yeah, and if that cool. but if but if the person who suggested that is like, I also love all of this great shit. My favorite movie is this and it's great or whatever. It's all this great stuff. And they're like, man, I really love this movie. It's safe to say maybe that's worth checking out. But if um, it's something you've never heard of and you're like, no one's talked about this, no one knows what it is, it's like it might suck. Are you talking about I, like back when we were kids and you were in the VHS yeah, rental store? Yeah, yeah. And you'd just be like, I'm going to take a chance on yeah, this cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. most of the time that movie would suck. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a kid, there's a movie about a kid who's like a farting superhero. I can't remember what it's called, but it came out in like the 90s. It was one of those movies you'd just see at the video store. Like the video stores would just buy these like or like uh, license these like movies that were made by these like super low budget film studios, like the it's Pat movie and stuff like that. <laughs> like that movie was made to not be in theaters and stuff like that. But it's like, you'd pick up those movies and you'd be like, Oh, this is trash. And then it would, it would rightfully be forgotten to time. I, uh, this is t only tangentially related, but at school they released the syllabi like, right you know like a few weeks before your current semester is over with so you have an understanding of what you're studying yeah Man, I one of school. my classes next semester is called technology and psyche and the movies that we have to watch in it because sometimes we'll get like movie assignments there's two apparently these lights just came on there's two movies that we're watching one is her and the mm. other is ex machina oh mm. like, this is gonna be those dope. are great movies like, I will watch those and I'll like them and I've seen them and it won't be punishment. Other movies right. that we've had to watch have been all great, but then like, oh gosh, like this is, what's like the English Patient, I had to watch that. That's a great movie, but great like movie, not my but cup of tea. Yeah. Slow. 
slow. So slow. My goodness. There's so Thank many you. movies that are good, but it's okay to watch them once and never again. Passion of the Christ. I honestly think Passion of the Christ is certainly one of them. Honestly, I think Schindler's List is one of them, too. Really? Well, I, I think I you should watch it. I think everyone should watch it at least once. But once right you now, watch it, especially. there's no need to rewatch it again. I watch that movie probably an average of once every two I years. think you're torturing yourself. <laughs> I know it's I a mean, good drama, and it's like fucking the atrocities are real, and it's like a horrible, horrible reminder of the atrocities of our history and uh, certainly required viewing, but I don't think it should be watched over and over again. Another movie like that, I think, is... Um, uh, Human uh, Centipede. What's it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta see it. Once. Dude, Jennifer Connelly and what's that? What's that movie? That's Requiem, about, for, a Requiem for a Dream. Required viewing. Schindler's you should watch List. it. Doesn't need to be seen again. Schindler's List, Passion of the Christ, Human Centipede, Requiem for, <laughs> Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> yeah. The Buzz Lightyear movie. <laughs> the one that just came out, Lightyear. Everyone should the watch it once. Buzz. <laughs> yeah, everyone should watch it once. You don't need to watch it more than once. The atrocities in that movie—they're just—they're it's a lot. <laughs> it reminds like you Saving of Private royalty. Ryan. I don't think you need to see that more than once. No, Saving Private Ryan will not be doing that one for quite a while. Right? Interesting. I've watched that one multiple times as well, but I but guess you don't I'm have to. It. You don't have you don't to. Have to. I think there's certain movies you should watch over and over again, like like uh, Indiana Jones. Grace doesn't understand Back the, to the concept future. of watching a movie that has already been seen. Yeah, I know people like that. Like, and it blows my mind, and yeah. I have no argument against. Yeah, it. there's like, no yeah, argument. You, there, <laughs> you do know the ending, and I'm yeah. like, but I'm gonna keep watching. You know, for me, it will be um, uh, Jojo Rabbit or like Batman something, or and the Santa like, Claus. Or the Santa Claus, yeah, which we were. Uh, <laughs> I've already seen it. A little bit up. Uh, yeah, I've seen. We've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen this. Uh, okay, it's still here. I like mm. when someone's like, uh, I, I have friends who like, I'll show them a movie, and I'll be like, first I'll be like, have you seen this? And they'll be like, no, I don't think so. What's it about? And then I'll explain what it's all about, and they'll be like, no, I don't think I've seen that. And then you'll put it on, and they'll be like, oh, I've seen this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this. And it's like, okay, well, sh do you want to stop? Should we stop? And they're like, no, let's watch it. And it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> That's an awkward. Uh... <laughs> also, the amount of time we just spent deciding to watch this yeah. and agreeing that you didn't yeah. see it is lost. And it's Wait. like, we should watch a movie you haven't seen. Uh, now reversing back to a point to, I, I'm because I'm very interested, even though he's not here to, to uh uh, or put up his point what what was matt rob's problem with your statement well matt yeah. was like you're just saying that if you haven't seen it you're saying it's probably bad and i think that was so i made it more clear kind of like what it sounded like i was saying if i haven't seen it if i've never heard of it it probably sucks but i think it's what i'm saying is is like between me and all of my nerdy friends who love movies of all walks of life ages whatever these are people who have they just don't mention these movies they if it's like if i've never heard them mention the movie and i've never heard of the movie and they've never heard of the movie it's safe to say it probably sucks between us you're taking a very democratic view of uh, <laughs> movies. Yeah, yeah, but I think there are a lot of shitty movies well, out there for sure. It's it's like a democratic, democratic, but all kind of like oligarchic view, because they're also like at the top of the movie hierarchy. Exactly. Yeah. I, you so, know, I didn't want to say it, Joe, but you're not wrong. So, yeah, and I think that's where the kind of like highfalutin, at, like snobby part comes in. But it's like I know so many people who endlessly talk about movies and my twitter timeline is like 90 percent movie stuff so right. it's like if i'm ingesting movie news and movie discussions from like a group of a hundred plus people then it's safe to say that like and all those people kind of agree more or less on the same good yeah. types of movies and these are movies like jurassic park and terminator huge movies that everybody is... seems to love Jurassic Park. What what is this? It's a theme what park. Oh, 
Uh, I'm going to, Steve, I see where you're coming from. I'm going to give you a, I understand. I will call it a half truth, if not a three fourths truth. Nothing is absolute. Um, there's even stuff outside of all of their purview that was probably amazing and great. Sure. I get it. I because also, just, the, I guess the flip comes... side of your coin, yeah. the flip side of your coin is I watched a lot of movies that uh, film Twitter fucking loves and I think they suck. Yeah. <laughs> so... Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> and I also feel like, you know, yeah, it's basically that point that you made, which is like, there's a lot of shitty movies that a bunch of people agree they love, but then you're like, fuck, am I the weird one that didn't love that <laughs> or something? But if movies is like your thing, it becomes that whole thing. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it in an absolutes. I'm just saying, I'm saying there's a chance that if you've never heard of it and no one's talking about it, it probably sucks. What is follow up question for both of you off the top of your head? What is the oldest movie you've watched in completion? Probably the African Queen. And Did you just that, recently watch that? It was like uh, probably the past year I watched that. The Did African you know Queen. who's in that? Is it the guy that's always drunk? Dean Martin? Is it Dean Martin? <laughs> it's not Dean Martin. <laughs> no, who's no, no. It's, it's, it's it's Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Lover. Bogart. Bogart was like trashed during that whole production. And apparently it was like really hard for him to remember his lines and stuff. And you can so, kind of tell that he was like drunk the entire time. <laughs> so nice. Elliot is contending that 1951 is as far back as he goes. Steve, do you have What about Wizard thought? of Oz? Is Wizard of Oz I older did. than that? Uh, I mean, but I didn't watch that. And you haven't I watched it? Don't, I didn't know they made movies prior to 1951. So I'm really not the person to be. What about. year do you guys think Wizard of Oz came out? 1942. I'm pretty sure it was 1942. <laughs> 19. Well, in the movie 1942, directed by <laughs> Steven Spielberg, the movie, the black and white one about the lighthouse, the war. They are watching Dumbo in the movie theater. So, did oh. Wizard of Oz come out before Dumbo? It came out before Dumbo. Whoa, so it's like 1940? 1939. Whoa. That's three years off. We're, we're like going to be real close to celebrating the 100-year anniversary Holy of that fucking shit. movie. Holy shit. Um, Dumbo, 41. Pinocchio, uh, 40. Wow. Wait, Isn't hold that on. crazy? Snow White, 37. So Holy shit. Snow, Snow White. White was like the OG. Yeah, the first like fully color animated And movie. we've all seen Snow White, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that so Ellie, you must have seen Snow White from start to finish. I would assume. I would assume. Yeah. Nineteen thirty seven. So I was gonna say oldest, yeah. I was gonna say it was Citizen Kane. Oh, I for thought me, you but... meant like recently. Okay. No, no, no. I mean in general. Oh. The oldest movie you've seen, period. All the way yeah. through from start to finish. And I was gonna say it was probably Citizen Kane for me. And that's another one that I've watched multiple times and would watch again. Love it. When did that movie uh, come out? Nineteen forty one. So Whoa, so not not the oldest. Not. Yeah. What about um have you ever seen the the Millier? Or what is it? Is it Millier with well, the guy that did the the Man on the Moon? Millier Earhart. A Millier Earhart. <laughs> I tried um, watching Metropolis once, and that's nineteen twenty seven. Have you seen the Man I, on the? You you haven't seen the Man on the Moon, the one where they shoot the rock or the rocket to the moon or whatever? I know what you're talking about, but I've never seen the movie. I've never sat down and watched it. So, wow. And then, you uh, know, Birth of a Nation is a constant running movie in our household. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Teach him right. Teach him good. I mean, I hope it's to <laughs> warn future <laughs> generations. And that was in like 19, 1915. <laughs> wow. When was the ma Rocket to the Moon? Hmm. Is that what's called? Real typing? Yeah. Uh, not Jules Verne. Shit, maybe it's not called Rocket to the Moon. Man on the Moon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Wait. I saw the jazz singer in school. Hold on a second. Jazz singer's 1927. Um, a trip to the moon. Trip to the moon. Oh. 1902. That's crazy. But it's only, that. it's only 14 minutes long. Counts. <laughs> yeah. Boring. 
<laughs> Isn't it funny we started with that time span, like attention wise, and now we're kind of back to that? That's yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh oh. Joe, uh Joe, well, um we, we Joe, your your internet's being poop again, but we're close to the end of the show, which is good. Am I back? Am I good? Am um I yeah, you're great. Question Elliot, I know that you just you've been playing Zelda. I want an update on where you're at with Zelda, please. I, you know, I've been working on Terrytown a little bit. I'm getting mm-hmm. a little exhausted. I understand. I very much empathize with people who played this game five years ago and are still waiting for the sequel to come out in May. Mm-hmm. Now I feel like I'm just sort of like, yeah, I don't. It's directionless. I'm just sort of wandering mm-hmm. around. You will yeah, get you to get, that you point. You do get to a point where you're like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. But I, I, I've really enjoyed it, and it is so relaxing. Uh, and I decorated my whole house and got that all situated. That's it's nice. just kind of like. You know, it's a nice, um, it's a wonderful game. And honestly, it has ab- absolutely occupied my life more than I care to uh, admit. It so I have a suggestion. A... I have a suggestion for you. Okay. You going to suggest the next game for him to play? No, well, maybe. But right now, I suggest you do this. I, uh, I don't think you have a completionist bone in your body. I don't think you need to do everything in the game. No. In a game like that, where you're doing all those shrines, it makes you feel like you should. And they're kind of similar. To. The shrines are they're similar. They're all the same. Yeah. You've probably, all puzzles. Yeah, it's you've, like you... you've hit the equilibrium point. Like, you don't need to keep doing them. Beat the game. He did Go it. beat the game. He did beat I the did game. That. Oh, I you did, did beat it. That was... That was last week. Yeah, yeah. So we, oh. I, I don't think you were there for that, Joe. I have beat, gone in and beaten uh, Gandor. And now Gandor. he's just doing the and, shrines. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. And, but I want to do it again after collecting all of the memories uh, on the Sheikah slate. So, <laughs> oh, uh, and the, the little TikTok. Eggs. What are those guys called? The Toki Tuck Tucker? T- ne- yeah, Tarok? Koroks. Oh. Uh, Tarok? There's 900 of them. Nah, that's I've too much. <laughs> Nope. That's way and too I'll, many. I also nope. learned, I got a spoiler alert that, that it turns out if you collect all 900, they just inform you that all the Korok seeds are actually just turds. Like they're literally turds. <laughs> they're just their so waste. <laughs> your your reward is a, is a giant Korok seed that's just a pile of shit. No like it's way. literally a gold okay. pile of poop. And they're like, so, thank you for collecting all this. Then this I think. Their excrement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna, uh, Res- I'm gonna re- revamp. I'm gonna revamp my suggestion okay. for what you need to do. Get the DLC. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Do the that. Time? Maybe it's. And time. then you get to rock around on a horse motorcycle, and you'll oh, love yeah. that for like. <laughs> you'll love that for a half yeah. an hour, and then you won't play the game anymore. <laughs> That's what I mean. yeah. Um, yeah. I will say this, and I'm not gonna say too much about it, but I am deep into God of War Ragnarok. That looks so good, and it is. Truly one of the greatest games I think I've ever played. Cool. It's freaking so cool, man. S- yeah. So good. Everyone uh, seems to be saying nice It's so them. good. If uh, I, my, my, real, my real job takes a lot of time, and it's not like what I was doing during the pandemic, which was not a lot. The pandemic was my God of War time. I was like, I'm going to find a game. And I went into that God, the last God of War. It was amazing. Isn't and it I played incredible? It, I played it so recently that picking up this game right now would feel so good. But like, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, you should wait. You should wait anyway Ugh. because it is very similar to the first one. I'm okay the with one that, that came out recently. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So I just bad. love that. Like the if you look at the God of War series as a whole, it's like it first started out as like just an excuse for ultra violent demon murdering and then like <laughs> sex mini games and now it's like this father and son like touching story and it's yep. just so strange how it went from zero to a hundred it's like how when you watch the first thor movie and then you watch thor ragnarok and you're like oh I mean, these are completely tonally different it's just it's it's just mirroring the people that made the game dude when they yeah. first started they were young probably and they're yeah. like this is gonna be the cool thing and then you grow and you mature and, and you're like let's make some let's make some good shit i saw someone yep. say that like ragnarok just feels like all the other like sony santa monica studio stuff and like the naughty dog stuff like it just feels like last of us it feels like uncharted it feels like all of those kinds of games and i don't think that's a bad thing no oh. okay <laughs> all right that's good and on that note Thank you, everybody, for joining us this week. What a wonderful time we, we got to spend together. We talked about Flat Earth. 
I always enjoy catching up with you guys. It's a, a lovely experience, and I'm excited to see what fresh hell this next week brings us on a collective <laughs> level. Yeah, I agree. I, I know I'll be further in God of War. I've been deep into the new season of Fortnite, which is really fucking cool. It is very cool, note. from what I could tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, Elliot, what are you reading? Show us what you're reading right now. Absolutely, Steve. Thank you for asking. Uh, when God talks back. Uh... <laughs> Why does she look like she's pretending to sing? She's listening uh, to God. She is. She's Yeah, she's pretty. This is a, a, a psychological <laughs> anthropologist at Stanford. Um, she looks like she's trying to called... sing Britney Spears. That's There's what she looks the... like. Yes, she does. She looks a little. Oh, and we should. That's next week's podcast. We can talk about what's going on with Britney Spears because it's always. Uh, yeah, it's always good. something. Oh, uh, oh all right. Did you know there well, was going to be a Bruce Almighty sequel that was about Jim Carrey playing the devil and then the devil giving Jim Carrey devil powers? It was going to be a whole movie that was just the opposite of the first Bruce Almighty, but it was going to be all evil. Like Bruce oh, Damned. Went... Yeah. Bruce they went with the, uh, the building the Ark instead, huh? Yeah. And I guess his wife dies and then he like uses necromancy to like bring her back with devil powers. And she supposedly comes back like all gross zombie and like her body parts are falling off and it's supposed to be real gross and fucked up. And then I think they decided it was just too much. But Jim Carrey was like on board and loved the script and everything. Sometimes we are robbed of art. But uh, before we go, I'll tell you guys what I'm reading. <laughs> This is the Dick's Sporting Good Give the Gift of Sport catalog for the Christmas season. Let me open it up, page. Oh, whatever this is. Look at all those shoes. Look at all those sneakers. Which one do you want, Elliot? Um, I want a lot of those. I kind of uh, like the white do. ones with the red swoosh. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The white ones with the red. I like the purple and or the Laker. The uh, purple and yellow was color. okay. It's very Lakers, yeah. Uh, okay. And I, um, I, I, like I like the... the the top left is my favorite. That's what I go to. The top left top is good. Thing. That's very you, Elliot. I kind of like the yeah. orange one with the black and the gray stripes. Nice. Is that like an good Adidas choice. or good something? Choice. Yeah, maybe. And if you at home want to figure out uh, what we're talking about at all, if you're on the audio, well, that was dumb. Why don't you go back to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Valley folks, start this whole damn podcast over, go through it again. And then you can lead up to this shoe selection section of the podcast and visually indulge in what the fuck we just did. Thank you for joining um, us. That's how we do it. That's and, what we uh, do. And next week, Joe's going to tell us which shoe he likes. Hello, yeah. fresh <laughs> dad grass. Dick sporting goods. Single shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's leave with the, with the Unsolved Mysteries music. <laughs> To be a goblin, a murderer, a ghost, or an alien. So many things are gonna come and kill you. Your fridge might wake up, sneak into your room, beat you to death with a turkey. Woo!